All right, guys. Well, it's another maintenance day, and uh, we're out here working on my my little bitty snowblower. It's just a wee fella. Um, and uh, what we're trying to do is put a chute rotator on it. So I picked up this hydraulic cylinder off of uh, Marketplace, and uh, it fits, which is amazing. Very thrilled about that. Um, Basically what's going on here is at some point during the history of this old snowblower, uh, the rotator failed. I don't know what broke because it's missing several pieces, or it was. Now we got a big piece back. Um, and the fix for whoever owned it was to take a piece of rebar and bend it into a big hoop and attach it to the chute so you can rotate the chute manually from the seat of the tractor. And let me tell you, it is a royal pain in the p So not only do you have to rotate it manually, but you have to hang on to it. Because if you let go of it, the vibration of the blower turns the chute slowly. And let me tell you how I discovered that the first time. <laughs> so uh, we've got this cylinder on here. And now what we need to do is figure out how to make the cylinder turn the spinny thing, which will turn the rotatey thing. So you can see in here that we've got a multi-ratio sprocket set. And basically how this is set up to work is there should be a rack in here and the rack will travel in and out and engage this lower sprocket, which will then spin this upper sprocket, which then engages this rack, this circular rack, if you will, around the chute. I'm thinking for the rack, since this is a sprocket in here, that perhaps I can uh, measure the pitch of that sprocket and then put a piece of chain across the uh, face of the piece of steel. And then I don't know if I want to weld the chain on there or maybe uh, pin it on one end and put a tensioner on the other end so we can uh, take the slack up out of it. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. But uh, first things first, we got to get this guarding off so that I can get in there a little bit better to uh, take some measurements and start moving forward with what we're going to do for a solution here. Well, these were installed, stupidly in my opinion, with carriage bolts, which then immediately stripped in the square holes. So. We had to resort to more aggressive methods, but regardless, now we've got access. And as you can see, like I was saying before, not engaged, but uh, this lower section is adjustable. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping that, uh, there it is. Yeah, you can see the adjustment, it's on a slot in there. So hopefully we can just uh, focus focus there we are hopefully we can just tip this up re-engage it um, these are also in with carriage bolts so I'm sure we're gonna end up being in for more fun when that uh, point comes to pass but uh, first of all we got to get in here get the measurement on uh, this slot for the rack and we got to free that up that is frozen solid so I think we'll be uh, coming back out here with a smoke wrench um, after I pull some measurements. All right, so trying to decide the best order of operations here. And uh, one of these hoses I got to shorten up. There's an extension on it, and they're too long, even really without the extension. So I'm going to pop that extension off and uh, shorten that up. But I'm not sure that I'm going to do that first. Um, this whole sprocket set needs to come off. The, uh, the bolts are rusted solid. Missing shot, um, so gonna have to cut all the bolts off that. But before I do that, um, we got to get this freed up. It's rusted solid. Um, that's gonna require heat down on the main shaft and something to uh, put some proverbial arse on it. So got to figure out something for that. Some kind of breaker bar. Um, put some force on it while we're putting heat on it. Um, I think I'm going to do that first, get this broken loose, then I'll pop it off, get proper hardware for it, get it greased up, 
Um, then we can really easily get at it for measurements to make the rack portion for this. I have no idea if this is how this was set up originally, but that's how I'm going to do it. Um, yeah. Well, we've got our uh, torque amplifier on here and uh, tried squeezing a little bit of grease into it, which, you know, was futile, but I uh, was hoping maybe this would uh, break loose without heat, but uh, nope. So we're going to go get the uh, oxyacetylene tanks and uh, wheel them out here and uh, start warming this thing up. Well guys, sometimes you just gotta do things unconventionally, but when you need to get enough force on something to free it up, you improvise and use what you got. Work like a charm. Onward and upward. Well we got the shaft cleaned up and we got the bore cleaned up, just a wire brush, and look at the junk that came out of there, holy smokes. So now we'll do some uh, test fitting, take some measurements, and uh, I found a sprocket, but unfortunately it is uh, an eighth of an inch too large on the bore diameter. I cannot find a sprocket that is this pitch and tooth count with this bore size. So I think we'll probably end up buying uh, the one that's a little bit big and shimming it. Uh, it's going to be welded into place anyway, so it shouldn't matter, but it's annoying. Nothing's ever easy, but uh, yeah, we're going to keep trugging along here. All right, guys, so since we are missing parts completely for this, and I don't really know how this was originally, we're trying to figure it out, and we're trying to figure out what's going to work. Um, I need to fabricate a rack that will run this direction off the hydraulic cylinder and will engage this sprocket. In doing so, I need to figure out the dimensions that this rack will need to be. And this one's pretty easy, uh, that a piece of one inch bar stock or what have you will do for that. However, this one is more difficult as when this is assembled, I can't really get in there to measure. I can kind of ballpark it, you know, I can hold the tape measure near and kind of get a line of sight down it. And it looks like the gap is, oh, an inch and a sixteenth maybe. So one inch should probably suffice, but I want to try to do this a little bit more accurately because I don't want to go, you know, buy new steel stock and then attempt to put it together and say, oh crap, well that wasn't right. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a depth measurement from the edge of this flange to the bottom of the guide or whatever you want to call that uh, otherwise extraneous part here. So we're going to take a measurement here. Let me get this centered up nice. It'd be nice if the camera would focus. Seems to be an ongoing problem. So here we're looking at uh, three inches and I don't know, 25 thousandths, call it. And I'll take another measurement just to be sure that we're, uh, we're comfortable with this. And three inches and 20 thousandths, so we're pretty close. Then what we're gonna do is we will take this diameter uh, it's an inch and a half and five thousandths we'll divide that in half and we're going to find the center so when you take the uh, three inches and twenty five thousandths measurement and subtract the radius that we just calculated to this we end up with uh, two inches two hundred and seventy five thousandths and I can show you what we found here, if you set the caliper to that dimension, now you have the center of the hole. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to take this replacement sprocket, we're going to measure the diameter of that sprocket, divide it by two, and then subtract that from that 
uh, guide to center distance, and that will tell us exactly the distance from the guide to the tip of the sprocket tooth, telling us exactly how much clearance we have to fabricate the base of the rack itself. All right, guys. After that little bit of math, we came up with uh, one inch, 195 thousandths clearance. And this is why you take the time to try to calculate this out because it didn't look like it. So if you can see, just depending on where you put your head, you got to be right centered over it. And so I'm kind of double checking this with the caliper. I set the caliper at one inch, 195 thousandths. And we move over, yep. So that is in fact what we've got. If we had bought one inch by one inch, we would have had too much clearance in there. So we're gonna look for uh, one inch by 1.25 or inch by inch and an eighth stock. Hopefully that's available or I'm gonna have to machine it, which is gonna be a pain in the butt. And uh, we'll start getting this fabricated. All right guys, moving right along. So, uh, Got the, uh, the rest of the weld cleaned up on that shaft and uh, took a measurement for the back spacing. It's approximately inch and three eighths. So to improvise, I've taken uh, three bolts here and taken them over the bench grinder and polished them down to pretty close. They're, they're all within a few thousandths of an inch of each other to uh, inch and three eighths. Uh, then I can use them as a spacer to uh, not only set the back spacing, but keep the sprocket level to the, the uh, driven sprocket. Uh, so that'll slide down over there like that. Then we just have to get it centered up on the shaft. All right, so the uh, sprocket bore is an eighth of an inch bigger than the shaft. So I took some 16th inch wire and I've cut it into a few pieces, got some extras there. And we got three pieces spaced evenly apart, which will center up our sprocket on the shaft. Now, this is not spinning at a million RPMs. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be close. And this should get us quite close. So we're level. We're centered. We'll get this thing clamped down. Then we can tack it in place and weld her up. All right, guys. So the next phase is to attach this uh, chain, which will become the rack, to the, uh, we'll call it the body of the rack, which is over here preheating on the wood stove. Nice one inch by one inch bar. And the chain needs to be centered on that piece of bar. So I took the measurement of the chain, the width, uh, subtracted it from the bar, divided by two, and that gave me uh, about 179 thousandths um, that I need to space this up from the bottom of the bar. And you know, there's a number of ways that this could be done. Um, you could machine a slot in the rack and set the chain into it. You could uh, <clears throat> weld or otherwise attach bars on the top and the bottom of the rack to sandwich the chain over time, you know, then pin the chain on either end. Over time, the chain will stretch and it'll be loose in the middle. <clears throat> There's a million ways you could do it, but, uh, you know, we need to have it simply work. And uh, we're making do with what we've got. You know, not everybody has a milling machine in their backyard. Um, so we got a length of chain that we got at Tractor Supply. And I have a uh, couple scales off a combination square. When put together, uh, they're about uh, 172 thousandths, so we're really close. And I am going to wrap them in aluminum foil for two reasons. The main reason being it's going to protect the scale from weld spatter, because I don't really want to get weld spatter all over my combination square scales. And secondly, It'll make up a few more thousands, and we should be really close to the mark of where we want to be. So I'm going to get this wrapped up, and uh, then I'll show you how we're going to fixture this to uh, then tack weld the chain onto the rack. All right, guys, excuse the uh, mess on the welding table, but this is our basic fixture. We've got the uh, V, or angle iron here, whatever you want to call it, uh, that allows it to nest. There's a radius in the bottom, so I put a spacer behind it to make sure it's sitting square. Um, we've got the chain laid up against it. We've got our chain sitting on the spacer that we made previously. And then just a piece of uh, half inch angle over the top to make sure it's held flat. Uh, we'll start tacking this thing into place. All right, guys. 
that is attached. Hopefully it's attached uh, well enough to hold up to the abuse that we're going to put it through. We shall see. This is all uh, experimental, as you would say. So now the only thing left is uh, we need to just make a little, uh, uh, what do you call it, pinnable joint at the end so we can pin this onto the cylinder and we'll go start trying to put this thing together. through the uh, assembly phase here. Got the base plate put back in, got the cylinder in place, got the rack out here, greasing everything up, using uh, Mobile One synthetic grease. It's got uh, good cold weather ratings. I think it's rated for minus 40 or minus 50, something like that, minus 40. So good stuff if you're uh, up here in the frozen north. So let's uh, get this thing slammed together and see if it works. First test, not engaged to the chute. We'll just test to make sure that the mechanism is functioning okay. Looks good. Now we will set the uh, chute timing as close as we can get it and uh, see if it rotates. Here uh, after dark because we had a bit of an issue with uh, the lash was uh, not tight enough and nuts were rusted solid, but we got a rotator. Not too shabby. That's going to be a lot better than uh, doing this by hand with the hoop. Onward and upward, on to the next project. Thanks for watching.